Welcome back to Ask Sam. I've got some questions I'm going to answer today. Um, these questions are pretty important questions, and they they uh, they seem to be getting very complicated. Uh, I'll be talking. One of the questions is about iron pathways and some of the concerns about iron, and I made reference to it in, in some of the preceding videos. But I'm going to go ahead and start with a couple of the questions. Deborah asks, I've been on Velasta for almost three weeks. I was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, Philadelphia positive chromosome, and in remission. My ferritin level is 411. TIBC was 327, hmm, both of them high. Uh, transferrin was 242. Transferritin saturation was below 12 last August. Hemoglobin markers, all good, and I will have blood levels checked next week. Um, usually, ferritin and um, the total iron um, capacity is usually inverse of each other. So one typically is high, the other one is low. In this case here, it's sort of unusual. You have them both running a little high. Um, the, the, what, what this can mean is that you've got iron being absorbed in the bone marrow, probably around the, the lymphocytes producing, um, since you have this leukemia, producing very uh, high concentrations of um, blastic type cells. Um, that is usually a sign of severe inflammation, bone marrow inflammation, and um, the Velasta should be helping with this to keep that number down. You really never want your TIBC to be uh, above four, I guess it's 420, 450 maybe. But it's unusual to have both the ferritin and the TIBC uh, high at the same time. Um, typically, the way iron works, iron is absorbed either through the gut, uh, through the stomach, through the intestines. And when it goes into the body, it's um, usually transported through the transferrin protein. So the iron has to be absorbed by a protein to get carried in. Free iron is very, very dangerous. Free iron is what's going to cause a huge concentration, inflammatory response. It converts the peroxides formed in the mitochondria uh, in normal oxygen metabolism into a very high concentration of OH free radicals. So uh, you want to you want to have these proteins available to move the iron, the high concentration of iron out of your diet into the cells. Now, when we talk about um, iron, um, it, it has to be stored and it's stored in a, um, a caged structure called ferritin. Think of it as a soccer ball, sort of caged, but inside here it stores iron and it keeps the iron from being harmful. And that then that is transported through a, 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 a protein back into the bone marrow where it can be incorporated into the hemoglobin. And that's where we get our heme from. Um, but typically what this is, it can lead to two things. You can actually be anemic with a high ferritin and a low TIBC. In this case here, it says that you're accumulating iron uh, probably in the lymphocytes and your, your cell uh, manufacturing of those lymphocytes is probably pretty high. Um, the, 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 probably the, the most important part of this is trying to get that iron level under control. And let me see if I have um, access here to it. Uh, says, can you talk about the whys and dangers of this being so high and what I can do to help this issue in my blood? You mentioned ferritin slightly on your Q&A before. With my ferritin being high, is it good to take spirulina or liquid uh, chlorophyll, or is there any foods to eat? I don't understand these iron-related blood tests. Please help. Um, 
you, typically you can reduce the iron levels. Spirulina is typically high in iron. All your green leafy vegetables are high in iron. Um, supplements will cause more, a very high uh, absorption of iron. So you do not want to be doing massive doses of supplements. Um, that's just going to exacerbate this problem. Um, there is um, a couple things that I've included on here. There's an iron chelator um, called the, um, the ferroxyamine and uh, uh, phlebotomies. Phlebotomies is a mechanical way of getting rid of an iron. The iron chelator, um, the deferoxyamine, your doctor can give you, and what it will do will pull iron out of your blood, deposit it into your colon, and at that point, um, you'll expel it in, in your feces. So that part of it, you want to, um, you want to talk to your doctor about and it, it can darken your um, your feces as the iron is, is, is taken out. It says, I stopped all chemo and prednisone 14 months ago, and I'm still suffering from weight gain each week. It's like a switch was turned off and am in, and in desperate need of getting switched back on. I heard Philasta may help. Uh, anytime that you get on steroids, this is always the problem, is trying to reach a new homeostasis or to bring you back to the homeostasis you were at, the equilibrium levels that you were at before. So it just takes time. Um, hopefully you didn't, you were weaned off of prednisone and not just shut off. But um, this is this is always, always the issue. It just takes time. Um, I don't understand why it's taken so long, 14 months, um, they can check your, your steroid levels in your blood work. Um, but it's still uh, going to be water and calories in. And that has to be um, considered. Uh, hopefully there's not a, a problem with your adrenal gland. I would look at your urinary tract, your, your renal function, and make sure there's no difficulties there. But Velasta will stop the inflammation associated with any form of renal inflammation that might be causing this. Uh, check your electrolytes. And um, uh, it, it, if it is or can be solved with Velasta, you'll know within just a couple weeks. Uh, that's how quickly that will work. You mentioned to me taking 12 pumps daily of Elasta and how many hours between the two six pump doses should it be? It's hard to take it all in by my lunch meal because I don't usually eat breakfast. Um, you can spread it out in any way that you can. Um, I would um, prefer you spreading it out in a um, uh, over the day. Um, after a single meal, you could do all 12 pumps. So, um, that part of it is fine. We, we just don't want you taking it maybe two to three hours before you go to bed at night. So just make sure it's all taken, uh, prior to that time. Um, if you take it on an empty stomach in about four to six hours, your first bowel movement will show red. That's how fast it'll move through you without food in intake. So um, we, we prefer you doing it with food. Take it all at once if you can at, at the meal, and, and that's fine. Let's see what we have here. Kathleen asks, in your white paper, you said the reestablishment re of the electrical potential across the cancer cell is achieved by using the high electronegativity of carotenoids such as astaxanthin and vitamins such as vitamin C and D. The astaxanthin increases the polarization of the charge of the cell, thereby reducing the electrical abnormalities associated with the cancer cell. Also means that therapeutic methods, including the use of free radical scavengers such as vitamin C and astaxanthin, will alter the electric charge of cell membranes, which it does. The composition of cell membranes and the content of intracellular minerals resulting in alter alterations in the metabolic activity of cancer cells 
primarily sodium and potassium and, and uh, magnesium, and improve the lymphocyte identification and destruction of the cancer cell through hydrogenation or cell apoptosis. I thought I heard you say before that we should not supplement with vitamin C. What dosage of C are you suggesting in this white paper? I'm not suggesting any dosage. I'm just stating the fact that these types of carotenoids are electron donors. The problem I have with vitamin C is that vitamin C is what's called a pro-oxidant, C and D, B, A, uh, which means in, in another part of the pathway of, of the biology of processing these supplements in the liver, vitamin C, vitamin D, A, and B are, um, are pro-oxidant, which means they cause an inflammatory response in the liver as they're processed. So don't confuse the two here. I'm talking about vitamin C is a, an electron donor and can act like an electron donor to mitigate this. But very high concentrations of vitamin C cause a lot of other problems. Fatty liver disease is one of the others. Astaxanthin does not. So um, my point in the paper was the, that carotenoids have this effect of um, monitoring, maintaining, and um, manipulating the, the, elect the, the electric potential across the cell membrane. Don't confuse the two. Uh, vitamin C is good, but it's also can cause a, a, a lot of problems in when taken in high doses. Okay, let's see. Michael asks, I was introduced to Velasta from a friend that owned a machine shop in Tomball, Texas that used your product for a skin condition. I personally have used the product for many years which has lowered my triglycerides. I have a female Rottweiler who's been diagnosed with osteosarcoma on her right leg at this time. I listened to you talk about giving the Velasta to your dog, Duke, with cancer. My question is, how much Velasta should I give my dog? She weighs 45 kilograms, about 99 pounds, and talk about the food topper to help prevent issues with dogs. Okay, uh, typically we go with the same dose um, with some modifications. So. Um, what we would look at is 45 kilograms is going to be about 50 milligrams of astaxanthin to, or Velasta to start with. So uh, start her out there. In about two weeks, the, um, the tumor, if she's got a, a, a nodule, she should has a, have a nodule with osteosarcoma. It should be a bump or something on, on her leg. Um, I would have her re ha have the vet readdress that <clears throat> and see if it's growing in size or not growing in size. If it's not growing in size, stay with the current dose. If it is growing in size, then increase the dose by as much as 50% to get it to stop. Um, that's the best suggestion. Now, the food topper for the dogs contains a uh, preventative. It just takes longer um, for the dog to get saturated with the Velasta. And, um, but it's a good way to build up over a 30 day period to the point that they'll be protected against a lot of these inflammatory diseases. But when we're dealing with an animal that's already diseased, we want to hit it pretty hard and get it stopped. <clears throat> The food topper is basically for uh, prevention of any inflammatory diseases. Renee asks, I have osteoarthritis. How does Velasta work on the joints? This is, um, Velasta will work on uh, most, art, most arthritis, rheumatoid, osteo, and psoriatic arthritis. The reason being is all three of those are caused by the same free radical it's just on where they present themselves. So it has more to do with location than the actual cause of, of the arthritis itself. It's the hydroxyl free radical that's causing the, the inflammation in that location. So it depends on the person. Everybody's a little bit different. But um, um, 
with the psoriatic rheumatoid arthritis, it won't repair any bone damage that's already been done. So we can't get that back with Velasta, um, but it will stop the progression of those. And please, everyone, get your C-reactive protein measured at least every 30 days while you're in these disease states and make sure that that number is trending down. Hopefully ends up less than three uh, from a chronic point of view. And you're going to see most of these, um, the, the arthritic pains and the joints will go away as long as it's not bone on bone. As long as it's inflammatory, Velasta has a very strong um, um, tendency to, to eliminate that inflammation, thereby relieving all that pressure in the joint. Um, with that, that's all the questions that I have uh, at this point. And um, please keep monitoring your C-reactive protein reduce the amount of fructose that you're you're consuming sugar and salt those are the easiest things for us to uh, get control over our own health um, um, next week i'm going to talk a little bit about um, some of the cellular antioxidants that our bodies typically produce and uh, glutathione is, is going to be the topic of discussion and why we end up with inflammatory diseases. So with that, keep sending in your questions um, and, we, and we'll get to them. We'll, uh, we're we're going to try to keep doing this every week and um, God bless and take care. Thank you.